For the past 25 years, uh, Robin has led a company, Dark Horse Recording, which I talked about. It's one of the most successful recording destinations in the world. Folks like Taylor Swift, Keith Urban, one of my personal crushes, Carrie Underwood, Tim McGraw, I should maybe have a little man crush on him. Uh, I regret saying that right away. Uh, Matchbox 20, uh, Neil Diamond, Allison Chains, and, and many, many more have come through his studio. In 2008, Robin founded the Dark Horse Institute, which offers programs in audio engineering, business, and video production. And he has students that come from all over the world, as far as China, coming into the two campuses. He's got both, actually, that are in the Nashville area. Uh, he also just recently authored a book, Evolve or Die, uh, which has reached number five on the USA Today business best-selling list. So, wow, right? This guy's had a pretty accomplished past. So, this gives me great pleasure uh, with this type of background to now introduce Robin Crow on stage. Please give him a warm applause. Good morning and welcome to Nashville. Thanks for coming to my hometown. Over that time that I've lived here, I've gained an appreciation for country music that I never really had when I lived in Los Angeles. But from time to time, I do hear some pretty strange country music songs written by some sometimes pretty strange country music songwriters. Songs like, I'm so miserable without you, it's like having you here. <laughs> or, my wife ran off with my best friend, and I sure do miss him. <laughs> Not too long ago, I spoke for 1,200 policemen, and they seemed to like this one. If I'd shot you when I wanted to, I'd be out by now. <laughs> or by favorite, by my friend Vince Gill, how can I kiss the lips at night that chew my ass out all day long? <laughs> Remember that song by Bob Dylan? You better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone for the times they are a-changing. Wouldn't you agree he hit the nail on the head with those lyrics? Forty years ago, when he was writing albums like Blonde on Blonde and Highway 61 Revisited, America was experiencing this explosion of creativity and change with the emergence of drugs, sex, rock and roll, the war in Vietnam. But all those changes in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even the 90s pale in comparison to what we're continuing with now. Only now these changes are coming faster and with greater frequency. But the good news is those who best adapt to these ongoing changes are the ones that will win the biggest. I guess it's just human nature to hate change. The truth is we're afraid of uncertainty. We're afraid of stepping into unknown territory because it requires that we view things differently. I mean, what if our plans don't work out? What if our ideas get rejected? One of my favorite quotes by author Joy Bell C. You might be comfortable in the pond that you're in, but if you never venture out of it, how will you know there's such a thing as an ocean or a sea? Holding on to what's good for you now might be the very reason you don't have something better. The story of the human race is really the story of men and women selling themselves short, settling for far less than that for which they are capable. Now I know that times are hard. It's like the tectonic plates are shifting right beneath our feet. And we all know that working harder is not the answer. Many of the advantages that put you into your business and made you successful in the first place are no longer sustainable moving forward. But when you agree, we must be continually rethinking, reimagining, and reinventing the way we do business, especially in this industry. Let me give you an example. When I first opened my doors at Dark Horse Recording, times were really good in Nashville. Garth Brooks was selling more than the Beatles, and Nashville was experiencing this explosion of prosperity. But just a couple of years later, the digital download revolution came crashing down, and the music industry took this massive hit. All of a sudden, music distributors like Tower Records and Turtles, remember them? They went the way of the dinosaur. They closed their doors and they went bankrupt. And literally, at that same time, evolving computer technology began rendering analog recording equipment obsolete. In other words, if you had a laptop computer and four or five hundred dollars worth of software, you could begin making high quality recordings that used to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to create. Luckily, people 
continue to make music, but the way it was being distributed, recorded, promoted was completely changing. And I started looking at studios, literally not all over the country, but all over the world, and they were closing their doors for business. And I realized we were gonna either have to evolve or suffer the consequences. So we started focusing on customer service, even over technology. We had four studios over uh, on my farm, and each one of them, we created a lounge with home entertainment center with hundreds of DVDs for our clients to watch. We began stocking our refrigerators full of food with drink and snacks, and then we started coming up with better coffee, gourmet coffee, better snacks, barbecues, whatever we could do to give the customer experience a little elevation. And it's been that spirit of continually changing and trying to stay at the top of our game and trying to do whatever we can to serve our customers that's kept us alive and thriving to this day.